Hello, it's Marco Matosh here from Markham 3D, and this is part four of the saga in creating this TIE Interceptor. Now, in this video, we're going to be creating a lot of the materials. If you haven't already, please make sure you hit the subscribe button, and if you can, just watch till the end of the video to try and help boost the YouTube algorithm and pump it up. So there we go. We've now created the hard surface portion of this Imperial TIE Interceptor. I'm going to just add a memory blank for a little bit, and I think, I reckon that looks quite nice. I'm very happy with it. I wouldn't mind putting some extra details on here, but I kind of want to move along. You know, we've got a lot of extra details in here and on the side, and I think that kind of brings the ship together. But let's now go about creating some materials. So now I do have a whole bunch of objects, which I think we could probably start merging to make our lives easier. Cause I'm gonna kind of just put a simple, um, almost like a metal material. So let's jump up into shading. From here, I'm going to create a new material. We've already got our glass in there. Let's just click new material and we'll call this one metal. From here, I'm just gonna select everything. And if I go drop down, copy materials to selected, I think that worked. <laughs> Let's start off by adding in a noise texture. There we go. So shift A and we add in a noise texture. We can throw that one in there and we should see some weird results. Beautiful, let's just deselect everything and just on this visible area. Um, we will leave it in material for now. From here, what I wanna do is add in a color ramp. And so if I throw that in, we're gonna have now black and white. Lovely jubblies. Rather than UV unwrapping everything, I'm just gonna go Shift A, let's go mapping. And this is our mapping vector. And then we're gonna go Shift A and texture coordinates. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Let's grab the object and put that into the vector. And now you can kind of see how it's all evened out. So if I take that off, we can see that it's stretched. And if we plug that in, we can see now it's all evened out. Now, one thing I wanna do is I wanna increase the detail on the noise so that the kind of like the boundaries become a bit crisper. And if we kind of start bringing these two in, now we kind of want to mix two colors together. So we don't just have one flat color, but it's going to be like a very slight, tiny offset. So let's go shift A, search, and we're going to go mix RGB and plop that in there. Now this whole section here, this noise texture will actually come up into the factor and we're going to create two colors and we're going to mix these two colors here. Now I was playing around with this before and I'm going to go into the hex and just paste this color and we'll go into the hex and paste the same color again. But one of the colors, I'm just going to kind of make it just a smidgen off. That's not too bad. From here, I'm gonna bring down the specularity. Let's increase the roughness. Maybe let's jump over into rendered view. We don't have a light. So let's go shift S world origin, shift A, add in a new light. I'm just gonna add in, let's go area. And then we will, where's it pointing? Where are you pointing buddy? That way and Z. So something like that. Let's bring it up to 500 power and we'll go into rendered view. And then we go, we can see that like on these panels here, they're not just one flat color, but it's just kind of adding to that little bit. Now I wanna do this in cycles because at the moment we're just doing one image. So I'm just gonna do it in cycles where if I was doing an animation, I would obviously focus on Eevee. So let's go from Eevee into cycles. Let's come back into our material setup. From here, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add some extra stuff in. Let's go mix RGB again and put that one in there. And let's go shift A search and I'm gonna add in the ambient occlusion node and we will dump that one in the top. Now, rather than mix, I'm gonna multiply the two colors together. And you can kind of, you can see that in the crevices that it's gotten quite dark. So if we really zoom in on that piece in there. So that's what the ambient occlusion looks like with it enabled, but if we kind of bypass it, you can see that we don't have those darkness areas. So let's pop that back in. There we go, even around all these little greebles, it just gives that little bit of extra depth. And now we've got a nice gray color. Now I'm fairly happy to leave this material as is. Let's go work on the black stuff. So let's get out of um, rendered view. Now initially I was gonna make a texture I think that would be better, but I reckon we might just go all out. Let's blow the poly count. And we're gonna create kind of like um, an array of cylinders. And then that's gonna be our uh, wing texture. So if I just go shift A, I'm gonna add in a cylinder. Let's just move that up a little bit. Let's go scale. Actually, we're just going to this layout. 
There we go. That's looking a little bit better. And I was going to bring that right down. Let's come into modifiers. Let's go into the array modifier factor of two. No, I think factor of 1.5. And if I do that, and then I now add an array, we come down here, the factor will be 0 0.75, 0 0.75. Oh no, that's not going to work, is it? You're a jerk. Maybe a constant offset rather than relative. And the distance will be kind of like so, and a little bit on the Y. And then we've kind of got this effect. Yeah, let's do it like that. And this actually really needs to be super tiny. This is going to destroy our poly count, but meh. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So let's go a little bit more. Let's come over to here a little bit more. Ooh, let's scale that in a bit more. Does that change? That changes this whole dynamic, which is fine. So let's reline that up because I think these pieces here need to be as small as possible. Let's go something like that. Okay. Um, distance. Which one are we doing? This is constant offset. So something like that. And I'm holding shift to make like minute changes. There we go. So let's now test that out. I'm going to go G and hold control. Oh, good. That's taken in the right position. Let's go G, Y. So G, Z, Z, X, X then. And then it's going to kind of sit like so. I think we might go into edit mode, scale X, X. No, sorry, Z, Z. And we'll just make it smaller. No, we won't. Scale Z, Z. Mm, is that still too big? I reckon that's still too big. Let's scale them in even more. Oh, you're a jerk, aren't you? Oh, 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 oh gee. And we'll see if we can line these up. We'll make them even smaller. Let's go 0.5. Okay. Oh my goodness. This is now getting super small. Bring that right down. I think that should be good now. Let's go tab, G, hold control. G, Z, Z, G, sorry, X, X. And let's go ahead and add a whole bunch more. Scroll up a whole bunch more. Mm. I think this might be a bad decision. <laughs> let's go shift D and just move that off to the side. Let's now go G, Y. And we're gonna go G, Z, Z and push them all the way in to what there-ish. Is that sitting, it's not sitting on top, G, Z, Z. Kind of want them, come on buddy. Okay, so about there. Yeah, that looks cool. Nice. Now what we can do is we can apply this array, apply this array, sorry, Blender. <laughs> Let's go into wireframe. And then all I'm going to do is select all them. Delete. Well, actually, let's do control L. Delete vertices. Uh, that didn't work. So I went too high. So let's maybe deselect these ones. Control L. Delete vertices. Nice. Oh, how are we going to do this? Maybe we'll just go C. And we're just using the selection tool, just kind of rough it out. Control L, delete vertices. And I think that's fine. So let's now come into this section and we'll just do these micro pieces and hopefully we don't catch anything. Control L, delete vertices. And then we can come in and just select those individual nincompoops. Nincompoops? <laughs> I'm going to grab. Oh, see, we're kind of touching these things now. So really, this border is meant to be a little bit bigger. Control L, delete vertices. How prevalent is that? That's not too bad. I'm actually fairly happy with that. I'm happy to live with that. Control L, delete vertices. One there. Let's do the top part now. And we can do this nice and easy with a box select. 
Control L, delete vertices. You there, buddy? Control L, delete vertices. There we go. Control L, delete vertices. Nice. So I'm fairly happy with how that looks. Now, what I'm going to do is rather than repeating this again and again and again, I'm just going to do this quickly and then join me again in a sec. And so Blender crashed under the weight of so many vertices. So I kind of just skipped forward and I did all this manually and that looks, oh my goodness, so good. So let's select all these little pieces in here. Did I, I did not select the right thing. Hang on, what have I done? So with this, I haven't got a mirror. So let's just quickly add a mirror modifier to put it on the X axis and we'll put the drop tool to mirror off the sphere and we'll select did some pieces escape. Ah, you jerk. Now let's just jump into here. I'm just gonna quickly grab a few of these. Don't die on me, Blender. Come on, stay with me, buddy. Control L, let's get rid of that one. I'm gonna leave that piece there, that's fine. Nothing else extraordinary there we go there we go that one control l delete vertices yeah nice so from here let's go back into our shading um, we're going to create this kind of black material so let's go new material and we go black wing i can't spell black that's fine um, we will go into render settings and what we want is we obviously want a black color um, the specularity, I'm actually going to turn up quite a bit and we will keep a roughness on there. I think that's going to be important, but I think we need to do the back side here or black as well. So let's come in and select our panels. Let's go back into object mode. Let's go into wireframe. Oops, sorry. Let's go into solid mode. And I'm going to select these, these, and that and there. That did I select too much? I sure did. Select these two, select these two, and this little piece in there. We'll create another material and we'll just call this black backing. Let's go, base color will be black. I will bring down the specularity and the roughness up. And then if we press render, what do we got? Let's put in a camera and then we can actually check. So let's go shift A, we'll add in a camera. Where are you? There we go. G, Z, Z, I'm just gonna pull it back. And let's just press, I'm gonna save it. Let's just press F12 and we'll see what happens. And it's coming to an end. We've finally completed this tie interceptor. If you like the channel, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out. I'm trying to hit that 25,000 mark. Also, you can download this tie interceptor in the description. And if there's anything else you would like to know, please leave a comment. It really helps me out.